Hello everybody, uh, it is Mr. Robbins, and I am recording this video for Meet Your Teacher Night uh, 2021 uh, for my fourth block U.S. history course. So hopefully um, you guys are doing well. I just wanted to provide this uh, for those that are not able to make it physically uh, tonight uh, to the event uh, with some of the same information I'm going to go over anyway. Um, so, uh, with that, uh, we'll, uh, in here, talk a little bit about myself, uh, just so, you know, you guys know a little bit more about me, a little bit about policies and expectations, what to bring for class. We'll do a little overview of my e-class course page and what that looks like from, uh, your child's end, uh, a little bit about our safety nets, some other class notes, and then finally how to contact me. Um, so as for myself, uh, this is my eighth year at Peachtree Ridge High School. I taught U.S. history that whole time. Um, so I've been around for a little bit teaching this class and seeing how it's uh, changed and how we've worked on it here at Peachtree Ridge. We do very well um, as a U.S. history course team here. I'm very proud of that. Um, uh, as far as my background, uh, I have my bachelor's degree from the University of Georgia. Go dogs! I got that in history with a focus on U.S. history. Um, I got my certification to teach, though, at uh, Georgia State University in Atlanta. Um, as far as like some of the other hats I wear around the school, I also serve as the lead sponsor of the PRHS Student Council. Um, one of many um, other great sponsors uh, and advisors that helped me with that task. Um, and then I also serve as the instructional coordinator for the social studies department. Um, so I you know, have a pretty close relationship with all of our teachers um, in social studies. Uh, as far as my family, uh, there in the middle uh, is a picture of me with my wife, Ariel, who is also a teacher. Uh, last year, we had a daughter, Leah. She just turned one. There she is up there on the, in the top corner uh, at the arch at the University of Georgia. Um, and then uh, our furry uh, members of our family, uh, Buster and Cleo, are two cats. Uh, Buster is the black cat, and his sister is Cleo. Uh, so the three of us are the five of us if you count the animals. Now, what uh, are our classroom policies and expectations? Um, we're going to try and keep it simple, but uh, this uh, is kind of what you really need to be, be doing on a, a daily or weekly basis. Um, reviewing notes. Um, we're going to try our best to get as much of the work done during the school day, but the reality is, is that in a semester course, we're going to teach 400 years worth of history in about 18 weeks, really a little bit less than that. Um, you, you can't really, you know, go without some sort of homework, but really most of the homework they're going to need to do is more reviewing, not really learning. Um, but that is something I'm, I'm going to have to, to, to kind of ask for, uh, in order to see a high level of success. Uh, when they are in the, the room, make sure their, uh, students need to participate constructively, work hard. You know, when they don't know stuff, uh, make sure to ask questions, challenge themselves to, to learn daily, to do a little bit better. Um, obviously, being present to class on time every day, unless, you know, there's an illness or something like that. Uh, but certainly, if there is not a problem, being here is really, really important. Um Remaining respectful surroundings and of peers, obviously that's the, the supplies in the room, but, but also it's how we treat one another. This course, um, just by the virtue of having to talk about history, we're going to talk about some controversial topics. Um, that's just kind of the way it goes. Uh, but in doing so, you know, we need to be respectful for each other, uh, different opinions, especially as we get closer to the present day and things like that. Um, so respect is a big thing. Uh, don't plagiarize. Don't copy other people's work. Don't cheat. Obviously, uh, should go without being said, but I'm saying it anyway. Uh, what would a successful day look like? Be on time. Don't be tardy. Follow along with the lesson. 
you know, again, ask questions if, if they, they don't know something or they need me to clarify. I, I'm telling my students, like, please stop me if you're like, I need help or explain that. Don't feel like you shouldn't ask. Um, and so that's part of active engagement participation. But of course, that's like that daily activities we're doing, whatever that is, making sure to participate at a high level and then complete your work in a timely manner because if we get too far behind, it really becomes almost too daunting to catch back up. Um, that's something we learned from last year uh, with a lot of students who, even though some of those were otherwise be doing pretty well, um, just the pace, it, it's a lot, you know, to try to catch up on the block schedule. Uh, what to bring for class? Uh, you do need a three ring binder. Um, an inch and a half is gonna probably be fine uh, for that. Uh, 15 dividers for the different units will also help. Uh, pencils and pens. Uh, pencils probably more often uh, we'll use, but pens sometimes as well. Highlighters, uh, this might help with like, you know, reading documents. Sometimes we'll do that, you know, highlight and kind of uh, look at the notes and make uh, notes in there. Line paper or a notebook, really just some form of, of scratch paper because we will use that from time to time for stuff I take up. Computer. Uh, it's not required. Uh, you don't necessarily have to bring one, but I do think, especially with the resources I'm providing on eClass, that if it's something that you and your child feels comfortable with bringing every day, it, it's definitely not going to hurt them to have that. Um, and then just you know, uh, a good, ready-to-go attitude, you know, positive attitude. Um, you know, it's a tough class. We move fast, but with that, it's a lot easier. Um, now, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the digital stuff and the, um, the platform we'll be using, eClass. Uh, this will be our primary platform for lesson plans and communication. Um, it's going to be updated at least on a weekly basis. Uh, sometimes maybe more frequently than that, but at least a weekly basis with like the weekly agenda and the daily lesson plans that go with that weekly agenda. Now, as far as in class, I mean, we're going to go through this every day. You know, we'll try to do the weekly overview at least once a week, if not more often. Um, but I'm strongly encouraging uh, students and then you guys as the parents to uh, check this frequently just to know kind of what we're doing, what our pacing is. So I uh, mirrored a student just to kind of let you guys see what it would look like from their end. So when they sign in, it will look something like this. Up on top is my picture contact information uh, if you need it. Uh, but the kind of meat and potatoes is here uh, with the week's agenda and then below the pacing calendar. So this is kind of the detailed weekly agenda. Uh, where I kind of clearly list what our learning targets, our objectives are for that day, uh, our, our, our different parts of our lesson, and then tasks to do before the next lesson. And then below that is a less detailed pacing calendar. This, pretty much all you'll see on this is like the topic of the lesson, but not a lot of the details on the lesson. But the important thing here is like the pacing of tests and quizzes and stuff like that of uh, what that's going to look like for us as we move forward. And this is updated all the way through uh, the end of the semester so students can go and check that and kind of see uh, and make their, make their calendars if they do paper calendars still and stuff like that. Now, if we go into, and I'm just going to choose Mondays just because it's the first one on here, uh, kind of show you what one of the daily lessons looks like. So you would click here, or you could also go to the content section. They're all there. But uh, this is what one of the daily lessons would look like. So you got the date, you got the, the topic, French and Indian War, uh, the uh, learning objective there at the top, and then we have uh, our launch, explore, and summarize. The launch is kind of the first thing, the bell ringer, what we kind of start with right off the bat. Um, sometimes it'll be like this, something they're going to answer something with some of their own paper and turn it in. Sometimes it might be like a QR code for like a digital form, you know, kind of a short activity to get us started. 
maybe review something from yesterday if we didn't quite finish it, stuff like that. Then the explore is kind of the bulk of the lesson, kind of the middle part of the lesson. Um, uh, this day we did a class activity uh, with groups in the class, so I provided the documents for that uh, that went along with that. Uh, uh, if folks want to look at those on their own time after we're done, uh, it might not have a ton of information and details on this page, but usually if you click the link and look through that, it'll explain what the activity is a little bit more. And then the summarize. This is kind of the wrap-up of the lesson and stuff to be looking at as we move forward into the next day's lesson. Um, and most of them will look like this uh, with links to our... Um, Lecture notes, I provide them in three different formats. One, uh, the Google Slides version, uh, which is kind of my lecture notes I would give during a traditional lecture presenting on the board, which I do some days, but definitely not every day and not for every set of notes because we don't quite have enough time. I provide a condensed note sheet version as well. This is what it would look like with kind of all the images taken out, um, and kind of focusing on key terms and, and vocab and things like that. Uh, so that is also provided for every one of these. And then the last one are my lecture videos uh, where I cover this content in detail. I go through uh, the PowerPoint I just showed you uh, and kind of give some more context and details on this. And I have these for all of our lessons for the entirety of the semester already made and available for students to view. Now that's kind of generally what to expect for e-class. Um, on the parent side might not look exactly the same, but a lot of that stuff you should be able to see, but I just wanted to make sure you guys knew what your students were really going to be working with. Now the next thing uh, that's uh, going to be pretty relevant is safety nets. So I wanted to go through our safety nets with you guys. Um, probably the one that is most notable and that kids most ask about is uh, test remediation. So that would be summative assessments for us. Um, we've not yet had our first summative assessment. We're actually going to have it later this week. I'm recording this video. Um, but once those are graded, uh, we are going to allow students to do a retake version, an alternate version, uh, to get back some credit on their original test score following their original attempt. So they have to take the test the first time. Um, they will have to do a little reflection on what they did and how they did and what that looked like um, to kind of try to get them to think about what maybe they should be doing next time or for the next uh, test as they are preparing. Uh, but that will be offered to them. Uh, we also take uh, a series of assessments called the district assessments. Uh, we take them at the uh, four and a half week mark, our interims at the four and a half week mark and the 13 and a half week mark in the semester. And then we take our uh, midterm or DA post one on the, uh, on, the f on the nine week mark and then our DA post two, our final on the 18 week mark. We will use those as potential replacements. Now, uh, that's the kind of support we'll be providing, like, you know, as we go through the semester, kind of built in. Um, there are other opportunities. Uh, peer tutoring is going to be available after school in the Media Center. Um, I can also be available for tutoring. That is going to be kind of by appointment uh, after school uh, because we got to. Uh, usually need to make plans in advance uh, in case I have meetings or some other stuff after school but um, usually if I have a couple days in advance I can also tutor but uh, the end zone tutoring is available every day and there are going to be kids in there that have either taken U.S. history or are otherwise taking it currently to help out some of the students uh, in the media center. Uh, and then the last thing we'll get to near the end of each quarter uh, so we're not close to seeing this just yet, but as we get uh, further into September and then in uh, quarter two into like November, uh, this will start showing up the Finish Strong plan, uh, which uh, basically will be a way for students to look at and see what things they missed, okay? Um, 
And then they would go in and uh, propose to me maybe something they could do to demonstrate mastery of whatever content was on there. Um, we'll get some more about that closer to the time, but just know like there are these opportunities available and that they will be communicated uh, kind of as where is appropriate as we move forward in the semester. Um, just a couple other important notes I wanted to say before signing off. The first one is one that, um, you know, most people know, but I, I want to emphasize here and now. This class, U.S. History, is a required class to pass in order to get a high school diploma in the state of Georgia. So um, it's definitely one of the classes that if students do not perform well the first time around, um, they will be taking the class again or taking it at summer school or, you know, having to get it through, uh, you know, a dual enrollment credit if they're not taking it here. Um, all these things, they're, you know, just the way that the class and the standards and the diploma is set up that we can't get around. Um, now, that's on the state level. On the district level, we also have an assessment that is required to be taken by uh, Gwinnett High School students who are in U.S. history, the Gateway Assessment, which is um, a written assessment, an essay covering some topic in U.S. history we'll be going over this semester. Now, this is going to be administered in, sem in semester two in March, um, but in this is important. Um, students must have a passing score on the gateway in order to graduate from high school. Now, if they do not pass on their first attempt, which would be, again, in March, they will have some alternative uh, attempts later, uh, mostly uh, in their senior year. I think there's one in the summer as well. Uh, but um, you will have to continue to take it until that uh, a passing score is achieved. Um, as far as like looking ahead, schedule-wise, October 5th and 6th uh, will be our midterms and the end of quarter one. Uh, that's very important for us because that means that on October 6th, after I have graded the final exam for the first quarter, I have to put those grades in and submit those grades to go on a transcript for students. So th this is very important. Um, students here at Peace Ridge do not have until December to pull up their grades. Um, if there are things missing or like assessments to make up or remediation to do, that all has to be done by the end of quarter one on October 6th in order for students to have that reflected on their quarter one grade. And then the next day we're back, that's right before fall break, right after fall break, we'll start a new quarter and a completely new fresh grade book, which um, oftentimes is a good thing, right? Students can kind of start fresh, but um, importantly, if they fail that first quarter for whatever reason, they will have to retake it because it is uh, it, it is a standalone unit by itself. Um, now, quarter two will begin uh, after that. I believe the date's October 12th, I think, um, after fall break, um, and then we will go through till December 17th, the last day of the fall semester and the end of quarter two, where we will again have another grade reporting deadline as we finish up the class. Now, uh, the last thing is I did want to kind of communicate contact information. The best way to contact me, the most direct way that you know you'll be talking to me very quickly is via email, which is there, Hadley, uh, H-A-D-L-E-Y dot Robbins, R-O-B-I-N-S at gcpsk12.org. Um, this is, you know, especially if you, know, you need to get in contact with me quickly, this is the best way to get in contact with me. And then from there, you know, if we need to, you know, make it a Zoom call or a phone call, like it, it's usually pretty easy from that point to do that. Um, but please reach out. Let me know if you ever have any questions. Uh, that is what I am here to do to help answer those questions. Uh, but that was really all that I had. So um, I hope that you all have a great rest of your evening. I hope we have a great semester together learning U.S. history. And I look forward to hearing from you. Um, have a great one. Bye.